Good morning, Year 5, and welcome to another week of English. This week, we're going to be learning how to write speech effectively. So we're going to be learning to write direct speech. So that's when the people are actually speaking. We're going to learn how to use effective vocabulary and how to punctuate speech. So this morning, we're going to look at using effective vocabulary and we're going to be learning how to write an effective reporting clause. So a reporting clause of direct speech is the short clause that tells us who is talking. It's the clause that is outside of the inverted commas. It's outside the speech marks. So it's not the words that are being spoken. It's not what's being said. And we can write the reporting clause either before or after the direct speech. So if you remember, a clause must contain a subject and a verb. So for speech, a reporting clause contains the speaker, that's the subject, and the way they speak, which is the verb. So I've put an example there for you. Did you hear that noise? Whispered Sam. So the spoken words are, did you hear that noise? And they are inside the inverted commas. And then the reporting clause is whispered Sam. So it's saying how Sam, who's the subject, is doing the speaking. Reporting verbs, so that was like whispered Sam that we had before, can be really effective in our writing. But it can also be tricky because there are literally hundreds of them. And each one of them has a slightly different and often very subtle meaning. So we have to think very carefully about the reporting verb that we choose to use. Sometimes we can call them saying verbs. And remember, they indicate how it's being said, the speaking. So I've given you an example here. I'm really sorry sobbed Tony. So I want you to think the reporting verb there, sobbed, what information is that giving us about the action, about what's being said? So we're going to play a little game now. So you can do this either to the, the chair you're sitting on or if you've got a, another person in the room, you can share the game with them. We're just going to see the effect on what we're saying when we use a different reporting verb. So first of all, I want you to think of a very short sentence and just whisper it to either the chair, the cat, the dog, whoever's in the room with you. Then exactly the same sentence, I want you to tell it to them. And then shout it to them. Please make sure you warn them first. And then bellow it at the top of your voice. Okay. So you may want to pause the video and have a go at saying that same sentence. So you're going to whisper, tell, shout, bellow. Okay, hope you had a bit of fun doing that. So I want you to think now about the different effect each word had on the action that you were doing, the way that you said it. Right. As I said, there are hundreds of reporting verbs. So I've just found some there that I've grouped together. Have a think about the different meaning of each of those verbs and the different way you would say your speech 
if you were doing it using these verbs. So I've got snickered, snorted, threatened, warned, marvelled, quipped. There are many, many. Think about the subtle different meanings that we have with those reporting verbs. As I said, there are hundreds. I've put a lot on the, the video here so that I thought you could pause them and have a read through as well. And any that you're not sure what they mean, you could check with an adult or check online or use the dictionary because it will really help to expand your vocabulary and make your writing more effective. We can group these verbs to their exact meanings or the category, categories that they would fall into. So these are all ways of saying something excitedly. So I've grouped these together. Babbled, blurted, cried, exaggerated, exclaimed, gasped, gushed, jabbered, jested, joked, laughed. Marvelled, quipped, waffled. And there are more. I haven't, haven't grouped all of them. Some of the words may, may fall into more than one category as well. You could use them in different ways because the meanings are so subtle. These are words I've grouped that you might say if you were angry, the way you would say something if you were in a temper. I especially liked the fumed and the shrieked, growled, protested, hissed. And you can see they're, they're all slightly different levels of anger as well. So you can be very precise when you choose the reported verb that you want to use. These are ones that you might say, in remorse, that means if you were feeling sorry about something. Apologised, appealed, begged, confessed, fretted. There are many, many there. And again, you can see they have different depths of meaning. So you could use a word that would actually fit exactly how sorry you were feeling. So this is the sheet that I've put on the website for you to do today. So you can either answer it online and send it in or print it off and take a picture and send it in. But please do share your finished work with us because we love to see what you've been doing. And so many of you are doing so well. It's really a pleasure to look at your work. So here on challenge one, you need to read each sentence and identify the reporting clause. So remember the reporting clause is the subject and the verb, it's the speaker and the way they are saying the speech. And it's the part that isn't in the inverted commas. And then challenge two, I've listed some of the speech words that you could use and I've chosen some that could be grouped together into a similar category. So I want you to see if you can find the categories and group them in that way. So they have a similar meaning but a subtle difference might help if you actually say something using that, that speech word, say it in that way. It might help you to put them into groups. And when you've done that, I want you to try and find two of your own for each group. So you might want to come back to that as well, because the more you you think and concentrate on these reporting verbs the more you think of because you're using them every day without realising it. 
and challenge three is a paragraph there and I have used said for every one of the reporting verbs. Said is fine, it is a reporting verb, but it's one that we can rely on far too heavily in our writing. And it's not very informative. It doesn't give us very much detail into the way something is being said. It just tells us somebody is speaking. So I want you to, first of all, read through the paragraph. Then think, how could you best replace the word said? Which reporting verb could you use that would give you a lot more information on the way it is being said or the way it might be said? And then I'd like you to rewrite the paragraph, please, putting in your much more powerful alternative that you've chosen. But a word of warning, please make sure the one you choose does fit and keep the sense in the sentence. So it has to be one that, that would apply. You can't have it being whispered if it's definitely something that wouldn't be whispered. It might be shouted or screeched. So you've got to choose the right reportive verb. Okay, well, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing all your work today. And I hope that by the end of this lesson, you will have learnt some new words for your vocabulary that you can then use. So have a lovely day's learning and I look forward to seeing your work. Bye bye, Year 5.